What are they talking about? This is my Gibson SG. Looks like it, doesn't it? Yes. Doesn't have the big old... It says Gibson, doesn't it? Special. Yeah. And then look at the truss rod cover. It says... Uh, Gibson, which would it, it said that when I bought it, but it is what it is, and this is a good guitar. If you look at the paint job, it is, you can tell it's like a perfectly bad paint job. <clears throat> I told this story a million times, walked into a pawn shop, this thing was covered with stickers. Uh, skater, punk, who knows? I bought this up and uh, they don't have good prices or deals in there anymore. So, it's a place up in New Hall I used to go. And I was getting great deals for a while, and then now they just got junk. And when they get something in, they know they got something. But this, they had for a uh, hundred bucks, I think it was. I said, Pfft. No way. I go, the thing's a piece of junk. And the strings were just... They were just dirty. These are actually, I think, the same strings. I just cleaned them. And I bought this like six years ago, I think. I don't know. If you go back in time, you'll see the first time I played it. But I had to peel all the stickers off. And then it looked like hell. Because I had to sand a bit, and then I'm like, well, it kind of looks relic. But no. So I just taped everything here, because there was no stickers here. There's dust, though. And I just got... Done. And I let it sit, and there's paint dripping right here. Who cares though? It's a friggin' uh, it's a beater, but it looks cool. Speaking of cool, look at the strap. Look at these friggin'. This is like a misfits friggin' strap. It's bad, man. It's a bad strap. But it doesn't really fit any guitar I have. I mean, like, argh! and this is kind of like a black, almost goth looking. People, a lot of people think it is a goth, but it's not. It's it's just a SG special. Or actually, it says Les Paul special. Gibson Les Paul special. <laughs> it's got that perfect, you know, uh... ACDC sound. I just tuned it down.
Van Halen albums, like the tone. I've got a whole CD where it's just isolated guitar. And his tone changed so drastic from the first album to the second album. It, it gets cleaner. First album, it's got that great, perfect distortion, warm tone. Second album, it's almost cleaner. It's like it's not being, the marsh wasn't being pushed. Or the guitar, it's the guitars, because he didn't have that uh, destroyer. And to him, the, that sound was gone. He ended up borrowing Chris Holmes from Wasp, his Ibanez destroyer that he had, and he borrowed it for a long time the whole recording of uh, Van Halen 2 and then he took off on tour and Chris went to Van Halen's house you know because they didn't move out of their parents house until like the third album yeah because why they figured we're not home so they're they started getting gold albums platinum albums uh, the second I think tour they were playing two, three nights at the Forum, sold out. Someone broke into the house, stole everything. The Platinum albums, a lot of Eddie's crap, but not, of course, the stuff he was playing at the Forum because he had it. But that's all they had. They cleaned out everything out of that house. So that's when they said, that's it. You're not living here anymore. And they had the money to move them. But up until the third album... The mom still thought, you know, this is a fluke. This isn't going to last forever. You need to go back to school and get an education and something. Really. Which, whatever. I mean, my mom just was like, go, push, you know. She wanted me to make it. She wanted, because she wanted to be an actor, an actress, a singer. She didn't care. She just wanted to be something like that. And so when I was into it, she was full on board with me. Even let me, you know, so she would know where I was. Totally take apart their garage and make it into a rehearsal studio. And then put up with bands rehearsing there. But, you know, as long as we did it while my dad wasn't here, it was cool. And we were, like, cranked. Things would rumble. My friend two houses away, he says his stuff would shake in his house from, like, the bass and stuff. So I had a mom that was totally in it. So anyway, so Van Halen, what was I saying? Yeah, I was listening. So it started getting cleaner and, and cleaner. And, like, Women and Children First was like, eh, he was trying to get back to the sound, but he wasn't. You know, he was doing more just stuff. But he was it seemed like he had, okay, because they were pulled off the second tour and told to go back in and make another album. And they're like, what? We're on a huge tour. We're, we got two albums out. We could be touring for, no. Nah. They wanted one album out of them every year. So they went in and, you know, just wrote albums, in the, wrote most of the material in the studio. And, of course, that's when Valerie came into the scene, and Dave loved that. But I think 79 and 80 is when Dave had his first two daughters. Didn't get married, just, you know. He said, yes, I will take care of these kids, and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, Dave is, everybody's like, you know, Dave is in it for the money. He's not in it for the money. He's never been in it for the money. He was guaranteed a comfortable life. Before Van Halen, his doctor was a very, his doctor, his dad was a very successful uh, surgeon. They live in a huge, well, the dad's house is what house, is the house Dave bought. It looks like a, like an Italian villa or a Spanish whatever. It, it looks like a small town and it's in Pasadena in the, you know, nice area. So Dave doesn't need money. He's never has ne he's never been down and broke, ever. And that's why his 
uncle who owns that club, Wah, where they uh, debuted the last album back in 2011. Uh, he was talking to him about, you know, he was pissed because the Van Halen thing back in the 90s didn't happen. And he know he blew it in a way, but he kind of didn't. He was big ego. And the uncle's like, you know what? The thing is with you, you've never had to work for anything. He's like, what are you talking about? I da 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 You know, it wasn't for me. Van Halen would be nothing. And it's true. Van Halen would be nothing. Eddie would have been one of those overlooked people because he was going to sing. Or they were gonna, thinking about letting Michael Anthony sing. So... You know, Eddie was just all about playing guitar, and his brother was all about playing drums. And whatever happens around them is just a happy coincidence. I mean, if they were actually looking for image and great, you think they would have picked Michael Anthony? The guy that, the eternal roadie looking guy. He's very nice. I've met him several times. He's a great guy. I've got on his pick. I've got his autograph several times. I meet him at a lot of car shows. I haven't met him recently, though. Probably, I wouldn't, probably, last time was about 10 years ago. No, no. Uh, 15, 14 years ago. At a car show, because I had a, uh, a, uh, 69 AMC AMX badass car. And I'd go to all these car shows because I'd usually be the only one with one. And everybody would come up and look at it. Wow, that's a nice car. Thank you, thank you. So, what was I saying? So the tone didn't start to get uh, mean again until, uh, not unchanged, fair warning. And then he had a great tone again. And then fair warning was, you know, you're thinking, okay, they had too long, because that was like in 82, 81, 81, 82, was, uh, they threw out, uh, that one, Diver Down. Mary, here's something for the record company. 83, they did nothing. They prepared for the Us Festival, because they were guaranteed a million and a half. They didn't need to tour, so they figured they were going to kick back you know, put money into this stage and this was going to be it and work on the next album, 1984. Their last album with Dave until they turned into Vag Halen. Or Van Hagar. This is when they lost their, you know... Ugh. I mean, Sammy, people like Sammy, I, I get it. I don't. Uh, he's, he's too generic goofy, you know, that can't drive 55 video is, is goofy. He's in his little jumpsuit. He's, you know, the red, red rocker. It's just, I don't know. I don't like him. I don't, I, I mean, I, he's probably a great guy. I don't think I've ever met him. <laughs> Gotta remember, I was, you know, partying a lot. I met a lot of people. I just don't remember it. Like Autograph. I partied with them for two days. The singer, the guitar player, and the drummer, I think. I think. And they could party. I'll tell you. I was, I, cause I was at the Rainbow, me and uh, Tony, and a bunch of girls. And they're like, hey, we want to get in on this. Can we sit down? And I'm like, aren't you... What band are you? And he's like, autograph. You know, turn up the radio. And I'm like, right, sit down. So they sat down. Party, party, party. They're like, come back to our place. Party, drug, party, drug, girls, party, drug. And that went on. And we actually went back to the rainbow the next night. And then they had to take off and do their thing. And that was So I'm like, wow, that was cool. Autograph. So there's your autograph story. They're nice guys, but you know, one hit wonder. All very talented though, actually. <laughs>
what's been holding me up is these two songs hold on and the long going far away and i won't torture you with the other one because you probably don't want to hear it but uh what was i gonna say Thank you. 
just uh, what uh, turned into eternal darkness. Okay, so I was talking about Van Halen and how the sound changed, and it did. It changed over the, you know, and the last album is completely different. It's different from any Van Hagar crap. Cause he's got his new EVH thing. It changes his tone, but a lot of his, like, you know, everybody says if they had his guitar and his amp, they'd sound just like him. No. It's in the way, it's in the way he holds his pick. Like this. When he does that. That's a big difference. And he doesn't, he does everything his way. And that's how, he, that's what gives him his sound. The way he picks, his attack, the way, everything. The way he bars, the way he plays his chords, how he does it. You know, it's all part of his, his whole sound. And that's how everybody, you know, develops their own sound. Or tone. Or, you know, so people recognize, like, like that's Andy Van Halen. That's Randy Rhodes. Because his tone and his playing. A lot of, you know... <laughs> carry over of his uh, classical stuff but he put it a, a lot a lot of it you know almost every solo he's got he's doing that and he's trying as hard as he can not to do any Van Halen type stuff and even when he does he usually uses a pick or he would do sometimes he'd use a finger but you know he never did exactly like Eddie he never did and there's this one thing on online I saw that Randy went up to Eddie to ask him about uh, something about his, I don't know, playing or amps or something. And Eddie refused to tell him. And Randy was furious. He was upset. That is a total lie. It never happened. But it's online. It's on some, you know, idiotic uh, European... Uh, biography of Randy Rhodes and who he was and all that and like five facts and one of them was that he was extremely upset when Eddie Van Halen wouldn't, wouldn't uh, tell him one of his you know secrets or whatever like no he didn't care he was Randy was totally set on getting his own tone he knew what he wanted in his head the diary tour sound was what he wanted at that time but what it would have turned into who knows if he would have ever dropped that distortion plus that would have made a huge difference but I think for the better but uh, you know he re he had used that thing to get his his gain that extra you know you know that crunch it was all because of that distortion when he really didn't need it. He had it. Mo he had modded Marshalls and well, yeah. He's talking about stuff that whatever. But I think I'm done. So this is the thing. I was talking, telling somebody about uh, like Molly Crew. They're like, oh, they blew it with uh, Theater of Pain or Girls, Girls, Girls. They lost their audience to Dawkins. Nobody ever lost an audience to Dawkins because Dawkins barely had an audience. They never headlined a tour. They never played arenas. They never played stadiums. They never played anywhere headlining. They were always opening. They maybe would co-headline with some other act at some place, but it wasn't the forum. I'm telling you, Dawkins was not that big. People are rewriting history. George Lynch was not thought of as a as an incredible guitar hero. He was just like, well, he's one of the better players out of L.A. But he wasn't thought of as, you know, people are trying to make him out to be. Never. And Dawkins was never that big. They were okay. They had their moments, but that was it. So subscribe, comment. Please comment, okay? Just do that for me, all right? Later.